about you, but I always like listening to other people's stories simply because it tells me something about them. And I quite like telling my own story. Um, I try and make it sound interesting because my story is the one I know best of all. And each of us have stories to tell. Some of them are routine. I was down at the shops the other day and X happened. Uh, or I hear a piece of news and want to share it with somebody. It's how we communicate. Of course, the book that's being used for this Lent is the um, one entitled Living His Story by Hannah Steele. And I've been asked to think about um, the chapter that's called Communicating Like Jesus Did. Now, as soon as I think about that, I can fall into that trap of, well, Jesus is really good and he was the son of God and he knew what he was talking about and he knew his Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible and, and the list goes on and you can make excuses all the time. But we can learn from Jesus some very simple pieces of information. Firstly, Jesus liked to tell stories, stories that related to people Stories about sheep, farming, the land. Stories about politics, control, the Romans. Stories about religious activity, what was right, what was wrong. And some of those stories um, can perhaps provide us with some evidence of the kind of things we should be talking about. Not sheep in the suburbs, but the issues facing us if we live in the suburbs. That commuting, the, the struggle with the railways or office life or, well, that's something that perhaps we dream about now um, because of the restrictions. And if we live in the country, problems with the roads, the potholes, what happens when a tree comes down. All of these are going to be part of the life that we have and we just need to factor in Jesus. As Christians, we need to be able to share the bits of the story that we have for our own. By that I mean, when I was about 18, I was thinking about my life. I was wondering what to do with it in terms of my work, in terms of my understanding what it means to be Christian. And because of that, I made some decisions. Now that's part of my story. And if we can just share some of the stories we have when it comes to talking about Jesus, I think other people will want to listen to us. People we know well, people who respect us, people we work with, they have formed an opinion about us, hopefully a good one. And so when we speak, we already have some credibility. We don't start from scratch. Though sometimes talking with a stranger can be easier. We don't feel so self-conscious about keeping that identity, maintaining the kind of image we have, the kind of story that we've generated. Of course, with the technology around, people are always creating stories about themselves and the evidence for that is not always easily understood. But let's just think about it. If we meet somebody Perhaps they're struggling with an issue. We need to listen, and then perhaps we may have a story to tell. Jesus wasn't afraid of being interrupted. Jesus was always attentive to the other. So there's some good ideas there about how to follow that pattern of Jesus. And if you're feeling you need to be more confident, well, don't forget there are courses that the diocese are running, um, listening to God's word, speaking God's word, these are not only to be used within a church building context or live streaming. There are so many things that we can say about our faith simply, thoughtfully, realistically and honestly that will have an impact on those who are listening to us. They will be interested. Do not underestimate what your story might have in terms of bringing somebody else to a lively and living faith in the Lord Jesus. And you don't have to practice it. You just start talking about yourself and remember to bring Jesus in at some point. I wish you well with your storytelling.